calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, the Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za. Tanya Fisser Live is proudly brought to you by the Gardener and Detainee magazines. EMAG and digital subscription now available at thegardener.co.za and tanyafisser.com for all your gardening goodies and supplies. Good morning everybody. It's 11 o'clock on a Thursday morning and I've got a date with you. It's Facebook Live. Welcome everybody. I know that it's hectic out there. There's cold front whacking the Cape. You live near the beach, I'd suggest get your water wings out. Uh, you might need those things. <laughs> um, and there's lots of rain coming, lots and lots of rain coming. So guys, couple of things. Remember, make sure your gutters are clean, especially if you've got water tanks. Make sure that the gutters are clean, that you can get trap all that water. It's so important, it's so, so important. We've been doing aggressive water saving since the beginning of this year. And folks, we have saved so much, so, so much. Um, there are water tanks all over this garden. Um, every bit of runoff that we can catch, we are catching. Um, secondly, make sure that your wood is stocked up so you can make beautiful fires and like just tuck in. Um, and also make sure you've got a stock of all that important stuff like chips, yeah, sweeties and good movies. Um, folks, it's great to be with you all today and uh, as you can see I was just paging through our beautiful magazine. Um, remember that this issue, there's the cover, this issue is available now on sale. Please go out there and get it. Um, also detainee of course. Um, and what does it do? Well it's not just pretty pictures, this is going to tell you exactly what you need to do to become a great gardening guru, to become even better than you currently are. We tell you what to plant, how to plant it, what you should be pruning, what you should be feeding. So it's kind of like me in here, here in me, you know, it's all in one, mum, as they say. Um, guys, if you want to find out where you can get your latest copy, please go onto the Gardener website and you will find stockists there of the magazine and you'll be able to identify your shop that's around the corner from you, your local pick and pay, your local spa, your local checkers, wherever it might be. And remember, of course, that you can subscribe. Um, if you do subscribe, there's a six-week period before you get your first magazine. I know that our office has been inundated with calls because all of you good folks have been subscribing. Thank you so, so much. But it does take a little while to kind of get it to you. Okay, and remember, we've also got to hold on for the post office. Post office. Um, some places we can do hand deliveries, um, and that's working out really well, where a very, very capable, kind young man arrives at your doorstep with your favorite gardening magazine. Um, if you're in the central regions or in high metropolitan areas, uh, we are able to do hand deliveries. If not, unfortunately, we've got to wait on the post office. So, need I say more? Hmm. We used to have a lady at our local post office when I was growing up. She was very scary. But I will tell you one thing. She was highly efficient. When she took that stamp, you know that stamp thing? Got her. Doof, 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 doof. I, I was fascinated by the way she could just stamp. You know, they had to stamp everything. Dish. Um, and it was fascinating. And she had a, a white stripe here in her hair. And still to this day, I don't actually know if she put it there or if God did. Um, but isn't it amazing how these things just flash back to you? But never mind. Today we're talking about 
waste not, want not, about making more of what you've got. Um, it's all about recycling, reusing, upcycling and making the most of our waste. So first of all, let's see who's here. Um, oh my goodness, there we go. Um, we'll send you to the UK. What? Will you send to the UK? Yes, we do. Oh, you mean subscriptions? Yes, we do. Costs a little bit more, you know, because of all that tax and all that stuff. It does cost a little bit more, but absolutely. You can subscribe to this beautiful darling and send it there and put it alongside Gardener's World. No, BBC Gardener's World. That's their magazine. And oh boy, it's like, it's, yeah. So go and do that. Please. Yes, you can subscribe. Um, uh, who else have we got here? Pam, good morning. Um, Let's go and have a look here. Rosemary from a cold Rudderport. Listen, guys, it's going to get really, really frosty out there. So please, your plants, your frost tender plants, if they're in pots, move them close to the house. Get them into the courtyard. Um, make sure that your standard roses are really staked properly because the wind is howling and it's going to take tops off plants like this. Park the car not under the tree, dear. All right. Um, uh, yes, crawly things. Yes, hello, my girl. How are you? Oh, it's good to have you back. Um, yeah, it is, it's very windy. It's, and you know, the wind, the wind messes with my equilibrium. I, I get really grumpy. Um, yeah, true story. I, I do get grumpy. I get really grumpy when there's lots of wind. Um, but anyway, let's move along fast and swiftly. Steph, good morning from a windy George. Absolutely, um, from a freezing Boxburg. Um, and guys, I'll tell you what we actually did in the last two days. Um, it's, we, we've actually had a wonderful two days. We started filming, hold on, sit down. I hope you're sitting down. Season 19 of The Gardener on the Home Channel. True story. Um, and I... <laughs> Uh, I was just blown away and of course because of all the rules and everything we're all running around with masks we're meeting gardeners with masks um, but we got out to see some beautiful gardens that we'll be showcasing on the new season of The Gardener which is going to be airing mid-September or to end of September on the home channel that's channel 176 um, na season 19 Yo, if I make it to season 20, we're going to have to have like a celebration, a big celebration. Um, hello from Lusaka, Chewe. Hello from Lusaka, Zambia. Um, Maria, good morning from PMB. Yes, um, just dig us up. Um, just dig up as, just dig up as. Okay, I don't know what that means. Okay. Um, morning from Doc Hardware. Oh, well, good morning, Doc Hardware. Good to have you on board. Um not much going on here. Salam from Indonesia. Salam alaikum. Is that what I say? Sorry, might be a bit wrong off there. But good morning and welcome from Indonesia. <sighs> Indonesia's got beautiful plants. Ooh, ooh, beautiful plants. Um, alrighty. Um, uh, where else? Let's go and have a look here. Um, SO Homestead, you've got your own channel and trying to get things going. Well, come on. You can get it going on YouTube. Um, and we've got Judy saying good morning um, from a cold, wet and windy Cape Town. And who else have we got in here? Let's just go over here. Let's just see if we've got any there. Right. Um, we've got some questions already lining up. But guys, before we get into that, geez, I can see um, Esme, you are diving straight into it uh, with your questions. So let's get started. Number one, the biggest, the biggest message the biggest message and if there's only one thing you are going to absorb and retain from this Facebook live is the following everything that we have in our gardens the leaves that fall the grass clippings that we get from cutting our lawn the bits of compost that's left over the little bit that's left over in the bag the eggshells the potato peels the citrus peels all the leftovers all have a purpose and instead of filling up those black bags that then sit and wait for one whole week before the garbage truck comes, I've got a better way for you to use all of those. And that's the bottom line. We end up using less plastic. We end up wasting not as much. And we end up saving, saving. And probably creating the most amazing compost or worm tea or bokashi, we that we can use in our gardens. 
that's it. It's all there. And it's for us to just implement. Okay. So we're going to start off with the basics. Guys, the basics are mulch. Okay. So what is mulch? Much more mulch. We've all got to have a lot more of that. And that is when we've planted a garden and we've got a couple of shrubs here, there and there and there. You must never have naked soil. Never. Naked and afraid. Yes, exactly. You don't want that. You want to have your soil covered with beautiful organic content. Think about it. When you walk in a forest, okay, when you walk in a grassland, you never see bare bits of soil. You don't. The soil is covered with tiny grasses. It's covered with leaves that have fallen from the forest. Where you do see naked soil, what do you normally see? Mm. The big rains that are coming, wash the soil away. Yep erosion, taking away all the beautiful nutrition. So that's what we don't want. We want to make sure that every single bit of soil in our gardens is covered because there are a couple of things that happen when we mulch. Okay, listen up carefully. Number one, you trap the moisture. So when it rains, it goes through the mulch, it gets trapped. It doesn't evaporate, right? So the moisture stays in there longer. Better, excellent. Number two, it stops the weeds. Doo -doo. Excellent, for sure, because when you've got naked bits of soil, rain, okay, you've got moisture, rain, sunlight, all the things that you need for seed germination, and then you're going to have those unwanted weed seeds germinating, so you have to weed less, which is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. The other thing that mulch does is it helps to trap the nutrients, okay, and the third most important thing is that you are adding organic content to the soil. And when we're adding organic content, what that means is we are feeding the soil. So not only by the fertilizer that you're adding and all those bits and pieces, you are feeding the soil. So what can we mulch with? Let's show you a few things. Number one, ha ha, look at this. Isn't it? Okay, wait, wait, I've got to do this, Mason. I've got to do this. So Mason's our cameraman. He's over here to, to my right. And the poor man, I make him jump around and run all over. But Mason, um, thank you. And it's also, this is a big shout out to our technical team. Um, without the technical team, I, I would be nowhere. I wouldn't even know how to switch this computer on. But anyway, leaves. We've all got them. We've got millions of leaves at the moment all over our garden. They're flying around. Some of you are dodging them and whatever. We've got them and they're free. They're free, guys. And what do we do with these? Well, unfortunately, most of us send either ourselves out or our husbands, wives, partners with the rake. And we rake them all up and we rake them and we rake them and we rake them. Oh, now I'm making crunchy noises underneath them. And I know I'm going to get shouted at by the technical team. Anyway, moving along swiftly. And you rake them, rake them, rake them all up. You put them in a bag and you pay someone to take it away. Oh, what nonsense. Absolute rubbish. You did not pass begin. You failed. What we should be doing with this is using it on the compost heap. These leaves should be put on the compost heap. They should be used as a mulch. If you don't like the look of leaves around your flower beds because you think it looks untidy, take a pill. By day three, <laughs> you'll be walking around and saying, darling, these leaves look wonderful out here. They're looking fabulous. Guys, this, this is the food of God's. This is the stuff for our gardens, and it's free, and it's right here. Okay, so I'm going to teach you another thing a little bit later about what to do with these. But I just, I love autumn leaves. And, you know, we run around, and, and I often, I'd, I'll be driving somewhere, and, stop the car, jump out, because there are some beautiful leaves that, they, they're just so pretty, you know. And nature's already done half the composting for us, because the leaves turn brown, so there's a chemical reaction that's taken place in the leaves and they're already halfway there to be turned into beautiful mulch that can be used in our garden to feed our soil. Okay. Oh, I love this. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> okay. So that's the one thing you can use as mulch. The other thing you can use as mulch is this. And these have become really popular um, of late. And these are macadamia nutshells. Yeah, we all love macadamia nuts, but you can buy these now at your local garden center, um, at your builders, and they work brilliantly. So if you slightly like, um, is the right word, uh, 
if you're slightly more pedantic about the neatness in your garden, then use macadamia nutshells. They work brilliantly um, and they work as a lovely mulch, as a thick layer of organic material across the top of your soil. Okay, so that's the other one that you can use. Um, of course, you can use different grades of pine bark. Okay, so have a look here. Now, this is pine bark that you'll, you'll be able to get from your local garden center. This is the fine one. I actually prefer using the fine um, the fine bark, especially if you're going to be putting it in pathways where you actually want to walk over. Much easier than these guys over here. Um, this is the big chunky stuff, um, but also works brilliantly. And remember, this is natural pine bark. Nothing's been done to it. It's just been chipped up. So what it does is that as it starts breaking down and the natural composting process happening, so after many years, and this doesn't last for a couple of months, eh? this lasts for a long, long time, will start breaking down and adding that important humic content to your soil. All right, so I've used that word quite a bit, and maybe I should explain what it is. Humic content is by adding organic matter. When we add organic matter, we do a whole lot of things to the soil. Number one, we're improving the nutrition, all right? We're making those fertilizers and those nu nutrients that are in the soil more readily available. We help with evaporation, so your soil holds your moisture better, which means that your plants are going to be happier. Okay, so it improves your drainage and your water holding capacity, which is really important. So, and all, there are, no, there are no negatives to this. They're only pluses. Okay, so that's that stuff over there. The other thing that has become really popular for mulch, of course, is beautiful clippies, stones, gravel. And, and I know that many of us have spent thousands and thousands of rons buying stones. <laughs> Doesn't it sound weird? <laughs> we bought stones. Yes, but we have, and it's, it's become quite trendy. It's quite fashionable to use stones as a mulch. Um, and I don't mind it. I really don't mind it, except for the following things. Always remember to put down your weed guard. What is your weed guard? It's that matting. It's that matting that you put down, all right, and you get it in brown or black. It comes with pegs, so you can even peg it in place, and then you put down your gravel. Because if you don't, what happens is your beautiful stones get smushed into the soil, all right, and then you end up having to dig them up and actually go and wash them. I've seen you do it. Wash them and then put them back. So gravel works particularly well as a mulch. Okay. Right, the other thing that works beautifully as a mulch, um, which we use quite a bit, and <laughs> most of you actually see here, look here, there's a chicken feather. This is from Martha or George. Um, so these are, so as we take the bedding out um, from, and, and we change it from the chicken coop, so we then take this and we use it and we put it straight onto the veggie garden. So around each of our little veggies, we have this beautiful thick blanket of mulch, which helps in all the ways that I've just mentioned. Um, if you don't have chickens, it doesn't matter, you just use the straw, okay? Because it does exactly the same thing. Here we've just got an extra bit of nutrition that's coming along with this. Um, added value. You know, it's like when you find a worm in your lettuce. It's just extra protein. Sorry if you're vegan, but you know, it's just eating lettuce. Okay, right. So that's mulching. Let's just pop along here and see. Oh, Sharon, are macadamia nuts shells likely to be eaten by termites. Hi, Bo, I'm going to tell you a story, um, uh, Sharon. My little Rolo, you know, my new little brown chocolate Yorkie, um, he's got teeth like, uh, like um, a Tyrannosaurus Rex, like really big teeth, uh, very sharp, and he can't even break this macadamia nut shell. And I think if you've tried to break this, oh, Oh, I'm going to end up going to the dentist. Let's not do that. Do not try this at home. Um, no, they will not eat it. I promise you that because even their sharp incisors will not be able to destroy this. Done and dusted. Okay. Um, Mandy, I use tea bags for my azaleas, hydrangeas, and camellias, which require acidic soil. Yes, good job. Absolutely good job. Fantastic job. Um, if you can do that, yes. And I've just lost my computer screen. 
something happened here. Oh, there it's back. Oh, it's back. Okay. All right. So, yes, you can definitely use that. And if you can get hold of pine needles, um, you know, we all see these pine trees growing along the side of the road. Always have a checker's packet with you. And I don't know why I always call them, but a, a packet bag, plastic bag, <laughs> or a black bin bag. Have a checker's packet with you. So if you're driving along and you see some um, pine trees, you can stop, get that, and use that as a mulch because it feeds those acid-loving plants like the camellias, like your rhododendrons, like your gardenias that enjoy that, and your hydrangeas, and use that as a beautiful thick blanket. Okay. Um, um, Penelope, morning from a beautiful and balmy Southport. Really? No wind? What a story. Um, please can you solve a worm question that I've been given so many different answers to. Um, each gardener has their own theory. Uh, wait, I think I better click on this so I can see the rest. Um, what does it say? Eh, eh, eh. Oh, wait, here it is. Can... Uh, can you give your worms, worms all your leftover herb cuttings, including stems? What's the question? Well, of course you can. Yes, 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 yes. Remember, just remember though. And I, I'm going to touch on worms really, really soon. So, um, in fact, maybe we should just go there. Um, let's just do this. So, seeing as though we are on the topic right away. So, when you're feeding your worms. So, this is the Tupperware that comes from our kitchen. This Tupperware lives in the scullery 24-7. And the bits that we are not using, like these are the tops of some celery. All right. Um, we didn't use those. There's some eggshells because we've got so many that have been left over. We've got enough that we've put into the veggie garden. We've got a few carrots here, carrot bits. All right, traditionally what would also be in here would be some tea leaves, tea bags, coffee grinds. Um, what else? Um, boxes, egg boxes. Okay, all of those things are good for your worms. Remember, worms are vegetarians. That's the first and foremost that you need to understand. Worms are vegetarians. All right. So if you're going to feed this to your worms, personally, it's too big. Okay. Worms take much longer then to be able to break this down. So chop it up. Be nice to them. So break it up, chop it up. All right. And then feed it to your worms because the stems obviously are harder. Yeah, you know, they are harder. They're thicker. Much, the worms will find this much easier to be able to, to, to eat and to process than a stem. And that's what happens. The stems end up being processed last and they take a little longer. Even with your carrots, chop these up fine. Okay, so to make things easier in the household, we have a Tupperware. The lid gets put on it after we've had a meal, after we've finished prepping, and it gets put on the side of the counter. And once a week, we go and feed the worms. Okay, so... Let's go to the worms. Okay, let's go to the worms. Come along here and I'm going to show you. Mace, are you with me here on the worms? So guys, this is a worm farm, all right? This is actually a homemade worm farm. Um, and take a look at this sexy one here. Ooh, now this is a really sexy worm farm. In fact, this one is so sexy, it can be in your kitchen. Um, it could even be a centerpiece in your dining room. True story, because worm farms don't stink. They don't. They do not stink. So this is your lid. Take your lid off. All right. Here's your top level. So remember, worms feed in layers. Okay, and I'm going to go right down here and lift it up. Okay, have a look in here. Here's a little sieve. And what happens is that sieve will catch some of the worm castings. Oh, Louis escaped. Hey, boy, Wanna, get back inside. Come now. Don't leave your friends. So this is your worm castings that already have been started to fall through. And then in the base is your worm wee. That's where the worm tea collects. And underneath here is a little tap so that as your worm wee is collecting, you just open the tap and you can catch it and then you dilute it into water. Okay, so let's just reassemble this baby. Um, so there it is. And in here are the little guys. Okay, but I'm... Um, I know Mason's going to have difficulty in getting in there. But these worm farms, guys, they're fab. 
they're really fab and they look good and they, they, they're gorgeous. I mean, they, they really could be used as like a centerpiece. You can grab these guys on my online store. Go to tanyafissa.com um, and you can get them there. But now, take a look here. This is the budget beating one. This is one of those tubs that you buy um, from the hardware store. Made a couple of holes, drilled a couple of holes in here, holes in the bottom to catch. Da, 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 da. Exhibit A. Beautiful worm wee. Oh, okay. Now they, the fancy people call it worm tea. <laughs> but it's just worm wee, guys. Okay, so the you know, worms have become a, a huge thing. A huge, huge thing. And let me tell you, there was a very clever man who spent a lot of time, a lot of time researching worms. And that was Darwin. Darwin spent years researching the earthworm because of its amazing properties. And the fact is that when a worm eats something and it goes through its system, when it comes out, if you end up with a teaspoon of vermicompost, a teaspoon, it is guaranteed that there are over 250, 250 active good bacteria and hojos and nutrition living in there. Highball. Now that's bang for your buck. Okay, let's have a look here. In our worm farm, okay, what we do is, oh, and by the way, you can't use ordinary garden worms for this, huh? You can't go and dig them out. There's a special worm that goes in here, and it's called the red wriggler, okay? Red wriggler. You'll remember that. They're great for fishing. Mm. No, I didn't say that. Anyway, so <laughs> what you do is, on top, on top of your worm farm, we always put in a piece of newspaper that's slightly damp. And the, that, all that does is it just helps to keep them a bit snug. Okay, makes sense. Um, let me bring this over here, Mace, and then we can really get in here and have a look. Let me tip it on its side. Okay, so right, here we go. Let's have a look what we've put in here. We've put in strips of newspaper because that works. Okay, there's a bit of grass. You can also put that in because remember they're vegetarians so they eat all of this stuff we've obviously got some eggshells that are left over we've got some tomato bits and let's find these little boys where's huey dewey and louie come on where are you guys oh here they are and this doesn't stink mason does this stink no mason's shaking his head mason you can talk um this does not stink at all but what i want to do is oh come <coughs> look at them Look at the babies. There they all are. Look at this fat boy. Hey, you're eating more than the others, guys. You mustn't be a fraud. Okay, look at them. Fabulous. And all they're doing is they are eating through this material that we've put in here, um, which is, of course, all the vegetarian stuff. The stalks of your herbs, yes. We've put in some strips of newspaper, old egg cartons, um, tea bags. All of that we have put in here, they're making their way through it. As they make their way through it, what happens is the worm tea goes down here. Now, now, now. Okay. Okay, I'm putting you back, guys. Okay, bye. Good night. Sleep tight. Okay. Worms do not like the full sun. This needs to be in a garage. Okay, garage, courtyard, somewhere that um, it doesn't receive direct sun. Very, very important. Or else these little guys are going to fry. Okay, and nobody wants fried worms. Okay, um, but also what happens is now I'm going to try and find a bit over here, and the thing with the homemade, um, with the homemade uh, worm farm is that when it gets to trying to separate the worms from the vermi compost, which is the stuff that's left here. So now they've eaten all of this. They have turned the newspaper. Oh, there's a runner. Oh, come, boys and girls. Come, Thelma and Louise, they're escaping. Come. <laughs> when you end up with this over here, when you end up with the vermicompost, it's sometimes difficult when you've got a homemade worm farm to get them and to separate them, okay? Because you always do lose one or two along the way. There are a couple of fatalities. And that's why the, the worm farms that you purchase like this, because when this guy gets full, okay, so when we have filled this one up here, what you then do is you stop feeding here. You stop feeding and then you start feeding here. And the reason why it's got holes is because the worms then make their way up. They go looking for the food. So they climb up here into this level, 
which means that what's left behind is just your vermicompost. Make sense? Okay, I hope you get it. So then what you can do is you lift this up and you've got your vermicompost. What do you do with it? Well, you can take it. You can use it as a little plant food, all right, around your plants. And of course, the worm tea, you take it and you dilute it and you feed your plants. And it was all for free. For free. Okay, all right. So guys, that's worm farms like in a, in a jiffy, okay, that's, that's worm farms. Um, if you've got any other questions, shout, um, because I'd love to be able to help you. Let me take a sip. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, right. The next thing I want to talk to you about is basic composting, the do's and don'ts of basic composting. Oh, I forgot to put this back, okay, but they'll be fine. Hold on, let me just do this quickly. Come on, guys, I'm putting your blankie on. Sleep tight. Sleep tight. Okay, right. They're fine now. They're all good. So, the next thing that I want to talk to you about is just ordinary composting. What are the do's and don'ts? How do we get it right? Now, so many people say to me, I don't have space for a compost heap. Oh, pfft. worst excuse I've heard. Everybody has got space for a compost heap. You can buy these awesome composters. they in that high industrial plastic. They stand about yo-ha, about that wide. They've got holes on the side. Um, so anybody can have compost. Anybody, anybody. And if you're worried about the vermin or it's smelling, the only reason you should be worried about that is if you do it wrong or incorrectly. Okay, so compost heaps need to work like a good Dagwood sandwich. Layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. So it's organic material, stuff like the leaves, stuff like your lawn clippings, um, newspaper, Boxes, cardboard boxes. Oh, and remember the same rules apply to a compost heap as does a worm farm. Compost heaps are vegetarians, okay? Vegetarians don't eat dairy, okay? Or well, what are those? Vegans. Yeah, well, vegans. So they're true vegans. They don't eat dairy. Um, so anything that is plant based can go onto your compost heap, okay? Now, um, so you're doing your layers, you do want to add a bit of water to it to help the process if your compost heap is really, really dry. But the one mistake where everybody goes wrong, which is when their compost heap starts smelling, is because there's too much green material. So if you add too much green into your compost heap, it can go really mushy and smelly. Then what you need to do is add dry, add dry. Now a lot of people say to me, but I've got so many lawn clippings and they're all green, what do I do with it? Well, guys, take the lawn clippings, put them inside a grain bag, one of those bags that you use when you're collecting your refuse, those um, plastic bags. It's not plastic, it's like a woven fabric. Put it in there and leave it in the sun. In a week's time, the green lawn clippings have turned brown. Duh, okay? And then you take those and put those on your compost heap. A question I'm asked time and time again. Can I put citrus on my compost heap? I'm told it's going to increase the acidity, blah, 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 blah. Okay, all of that is nonsense. Don't worry about that. The reason why um, citrus is generally dissuaded from putting in its raw form onto the compost heap is because it takes so long to break down. So what I want you to do with your citrus, shame, these are a few notches that we couldn't make our way through. We, we, couldn't, we couldn't eat them. A friend delivered an entire box of notches to us from Joburg. I mean, can you believe it? An entire box they had on their farm. So we've been eating notches, 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 but a couple of them didn't quite make it, and here they are. So what you do is with any citrus, pop them into one of these um, Ziploc bags and throw it in the deep freeze, okay? Leave it in the deep freeze, for about two weeks, a week even at a time, and then you take it out and then you empty it onto the compost heap. What happens when you put the citrus into the, into the deep freeze is that those little cells burst, okay, because they're expanding, the liquid inside the cells gets frozen and it bursts, and then what happens is it's much easier to decompose on the compost heap, okay, so it's got nothing to do with the pH and all that other nonsense, so yes, you can use it, okay. Um, Another question I'm also asked is, do compost heaps and do worms like onion? Man, love onion. Listen, I cook everything I cook with, I have onion. There's onion, 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 onion. So yes, they will eat it. You know, it's like if there's nothing left to eat in the house and there's only salty cracks, 
you eat them. Might not be first choice, but you do eat them. Okay, so just keep that in mind. All right, let's go to a few um, more questions here. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rowena, Rowena, you make me laugh. Um, Rowena Willis, I had my worm farm for five years now. I've nearly killed them off a few times. <laughs> but they are remarkably resilient. Absolutely. I use the vermi compost and tea in my garden all year round. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, and Rowena, how much has this saved you? And it's a great recycling initiative and you do it and it's for free. I love it. I just love it. Okay, Tiffany, where can we buy worms? Ha <laughs> ha. Oh. Okay, so um, Tiffany, what I want you to do is, is it Tiffany? Yes, Tiffany, what I want you to do is, you go, huh? It's Sophie. 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 Is it Sophie? Oh, it's from Sophie. It's little Sophie and it was Sophie's birthday. Is that Sophie? Yes, Sophie, it was your birthday and we sent you some gardening goodies and you were very excited. I hope you planted and I hope you're like still being at it and driving your mother mad because that's part of what kids do. Sophie, thanks for the question and it's a very good question. Where do you get the worms? So you go to a company called Wizard Worms. They're online. Um, go and Google them. They're called Wizard Worms and you buy your worms and wait for it. They deliver them. They come to your post box or they come directly to you. Um, one word of caution. Don't leave them at the push contour for too long because they will start climbing out of the post box and going to find that postmistress and try and eat her. Um, they can stay in that cardboard box. You get like two or three thousand worms, I think, in a box. Um, they transport them to you and um, the guys at Wizard Worms have been doing it for years and years and years and they are pros. So, Sophie, that's where you can buy it. Um, Diana, how long does it take before you can use the compost and worm tea? So that all depends on how your worm farm is coping. Now, the worst thing you can do is do not overfeed your worms. Okay, and you will know that. If you go and poke your head in there and see that you've got still layer upon layer upon layer of kitchen waste in there, you know that you are overfeeding them. So then you might need to start thinking about another way of dealing with your waste. So that is, and also if you start finding hojos in there, other hojos, because then the other hojos have got in there from the rotting waste, and then you will know that you are overfeeding. Um, so as soon as you've got that equilibrium, and it's, it's like you just got to look and see. Um, if you find that the worms are too wet, um, please add in things like cardboard, okay? They just don't like glossy. They don't like glossy. So you will never, ever, ever give them this front page of the Gardener magazine or any inner pages. Now, actually, they do like the inner pages, but I'm just telling you that because I don't want you to feed my magazine to the worms. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I hope that answers your question. But if you have been overfeeding, all right, then, and if you've got too much, because some families just have too much waste, then I want you to do this. Come look with me. Okay, guys, this is it here. This is insanely incredible because it's all that waste that we don't know what to do with. Um, like chicken bones, um, the shells of uh, seafood, like when you had prawns and you've got the shells left. I mean, what do you do with them? Oh my word, we put them in a packet and we put them in the deep freeze, waiting for rubbish day, because sure, when that stuff starts starts kind of breaking down, does it stink? We put in the deep freeze, we forget about it, and one night we're out at book club, and our other half thinks there's some lovely homemade soup in the packet, and they put in the microwave. Doo-doo, surprise! It's just prawn shells. <laughs> okay, so what do we do with that stuff? Fish bones, mutton bones, um, here, uh, leftover yogurt. Leftover yogurt. This is my other half's leftover mu muesli and yogurt. See, didn't eat it this morning. Naughty, naughty. Mm. So, what do you do with those bits? Because it's got dairy in it, you can't give it to the worms and you can't put it on the compost heap. But alas, you can give it to the bokashi. Now, come and have a look inside here. You can see it's a bin. You can see it's got a tap. And it's got a really good sealing lid. Okay. I'm going to open it up. Oh. oh, 
smells like a brewery. You know when you drive past SAB and you get that lovely yeasty smell? Oh, it's actually really nice. Um, so in here, we have got all the extra bits that the worm farm can't cope with and that we cannot put on the compost heap. So it's all those things. It's the eggshells. It's the leftover bits. It's the yogurt. I can put this in right now. I can, in fact, yes, let's put it in. Come. In you go. Good job. Um, all right. And then you put it in here. Then every time you're adding, you need to add the bran. Now, this is the secret. This is the secret stuff here, guys. The Bokashi bran. The bran has been inoculated with a bacteria that has all the beneficial microorganisms in it. Okay? So what does that mean? Basically, when we break it down into simple language, what it means is that in here, when you add the food and, you, and you've put your stuff in and you cover it with the bran, all right? Cover it with the bran and you put the lid back on. Seal it up. Must seal it up because the process that happens in here is an anaerobic process. Anaerobic. It takes place with no light or air, which is why it's also important, which I forgot to tell you, when you put your things inside there, I normally have a spoon or something, but I don't have it here because I've moved it for you guys today. And all I do is, or you actually take a, um, uh, a masher. What are those things called? Uh, when you're making uh, mashed potatoes, take one of those and you just firm it down. You want, you want as little air between the food as, as possible. Then you squash it down and then you put the bran on top. An anaerobic process takes place, which starts breaking it down, breaking down all of this. But imagine how much nutrition is going to be in a chicken bone or in the shells or, or even in your yogurt and your muesli. And then what happens is this. You have this and you can have this in your kitchen because it doesn't stink. Um, when you open it up, you just get this really lovely, lovely yeasty smell. And then I normally have to, I just tip it a bit. Oh, I don't have enough hands here. Okay. We're going to do this. Open this up. Open it up. Tip it over. Hoo -hoo! Here comes the tea, baby. Tea time. Okay. So, here it is. Come with me, Mace. Have a look here. Here is your, ooh, smell it. You know, it smells like a bit like molasses. It's got that, it's sweet. It's sweet. It's delicious. It takes me back to my youth. Um, it rem reminds me of, because we grew up near a sugar farm, near um, a, 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 a sugar mill, and I'm getting that sweet smell of molasses. What do you do with this? It's liquid, guys. It is full, full, packed with nutrition. So much so that you dilute this, wait for it, one in 300. One part of Bokashi liquid to 300 parts of water. Hi, Boena. Really? Absolutely. And that you are then going to use as your liquid plant food. Okay. One word of advice, don't use it directly on the leaves. Just use it because sometimes it can leave a bit of a stain. All right. So you use it as a plant food. You water your plants. Water all around. Okay, water your, you can water the lawn. It'll leave a bit of a, bit of a, um, um, like a residue on there, but it's fine when the rain comes, it takes it away. But this is powerful, packed punch, full of liquid plant food. Isn't that amazing? Then what happens at the end of it, okay? So I normally have, we've actually got another Bokashi bin over there behind the camera, which you can't see. We normally have two or three going at the same time because when you filled it, all right, what do you do with the leftover waste? So once you've filled it and that's worked all its way down and it's worked down, you open up the, the bin and there is going to be some stuff left. It's going to be like the stringy, gelatinous mass, okay, because all the nutrition and all the liquid has gone out of it. What I want you to do then, go into the garden, go to your compost heap, dig a hole and bury it in there and then cover it up. You can also just use it if you're preparing a new garden bed, open up some of the soil, empty the bokashi mixture in there and cover it. Bob's your uncle. Done. Guys, isn't this amazing? All the stuff. Okay, let's see if we've got any more questions over here. Oh, she went to sleep. Oh, oh right, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Okay. Right. Um, Forney, Forney. Um, hello. I remember you saying that one can add old organic fertilizer to the compost. Yes. 
So, you know what? Every household has got bits lying around. A bag of this or half a bag of this or a... In fact, it's so old it's turned solid. And the writing is gone and you don't even know what it is. Yes, old bits of fertilizer that you've got, a sachet of this or whatever. Um, just don't, don't use chemical products, but even a chemical fertilizer you can use quite happily. Put it onto your compost heap, give it a good watering, and that's all just going to aid and it's going to really add extra nutrition. Don't waste it, don't throw it away, throw it on the compost heap. Right, Janet asks, does the nitrogen and other chemicals increase with leaf mold. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So when you are, when you're putting down leaf mold, you're trapping those nutrients that are in the soil, okay? Plus you're adding organic content. Remember, and when you're adding organic content and humic, humates into the soil, what happens is it releases the other nutrition. So it might have been there, but it just might have been trapped, okay? And humates which is carbon, your basic building block of everything, it adds that to your soil and you're improving the soil for all those reasons that I told you earlier. Soil um, water holding capacity plus soil drainage, friability, soft, beautiful, friable soil. doesn't happen overnight, guys. This is not like take one pill and next day I'm happy. It, it, it's a process. It's a timeless process that you attend to. Um, and it becomes part of your gardening ritual. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. If you want to speed it up and you want to improve your soil and speed it up, then you need to get hold of some of this stuff. This is called Humigrow. Okay, now Humigrow is like one of the basic forms of carbon. All right, so in here is like um, 17 compost heaps on steroids. All right, and these little granules. And these little granules you can either dilute into water and you can feed your soil with it. You can mix it with an organic compost. Um, mix it in like it's, um, I think it's 500 grams, or no, it's 100 grams into one kg of organic fertilizer. Mix it in, fertilize your garden, and you're adding this great organic product. Okay, so there it is. That's a good way of adding humates to your soil as well. Okay, let's have a look here. Denise, what is Denise up to? Oh, and bananas, guys. Banana, banana peels. Once you've eaten the banana, banana peels. You can give them to your worms. You can put them on your compost heap and you can feed them to Bokashi. Job done, okay? No more excuses. Um, right, 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 right. Oh, and here. Oh, nearly forgot about this. Another form of mulch. Beautiful lawn clippings. Look at this. I look at that. It, it looks good. And if it looks as good as this, oh, and the smell, that smell, that smell is just so organic, earthy, real, clean, innocent. Um, and this works as a beautiful mulch. I'm often asked, often, often asked, Tanya, if I put down green lawn clippings as a mulch around my flower beds, will it remove all the nitrogen from the soil? Hi, Bowena. No, come now. Let's think logically. There is so much nitrogen around. There is so much nitrogen. And in fact, as South Africans, we over-fertilize. No matter what had to happen, you would never be removing all the nitrogen from the soil. So please don't worry about that. It is not a point to even lose one night's sleep over or worry at all. The only thing I'm going to tell you is when you are putting down green lawn clippings, please make sure that you don't put it too thick. If you put down green lawn clippings and you make it too thick, what often happens is it can sometimes almost become like an impenetrable layer, all right? If you put brown lawn clippings down, job done, nice and easy. You can put it as thick as you want. But with green lawn clippings, just be cautious with that. So don't always go to the same part of the garden, you know? Change it up, change it up, and disperse your lawn clippings um, around the garden beds, okay? Oh, but I love this stuff. Just love it. Okay. Um, Denise. Denise asks, um, uh, something put in, a, put in a compost heap with chicken wire. Oh, yes. What are you putting in? Um, I do hope lots of rain is good for it. Um, also, are there any vegetables, fruit you would avoid putting in the compost, like orange peels? Okay, Denise, we answered that one about the orange peels, that you can put them in. And, oh, the other thing is that people ask is potato peels. 
Could I be putting the potatoes in because they got nematodes? When I, no. Listen, nematodes were back in the day, like back in the Second World War, when they had lots of nematodes in the potato peels. You can be rest assured that the potatoes that we buy these days are nematode free, free. So you can put potato peels on your compost heap. You can feed them to Bokashi and you can give them to the worms. And Huey, Dewey and Louie are going to be very happy and they're not going to grow another tail. Okay. Um, on, on, a, on a Lena, on a Lena. I often take my neighbor's garden waste sometimes. Are you digging in the dustbin? <laughs> I often take my, my neighbor's garden waste sometimes. It's gold to me, but they think I'm strange. It is gold. It's food from the gods. It's for free. And I just, I don't get it. I just don't get it. But anyway, tell all your friends and when you, when you go visiting, and even if you go for dinner, you take your, your own Tupperware. That's not for leftovers. It's for the excess waste that you can take and add to your compost heap. Okay. Right. Um, Esme says, morning Tanya from a cold and windy Cape Town. When adding eggshells to a compost heap, should you rinse them first? What about citrus peels and pineapple? Could you put them into the vermi compost bin? Okay, let's talk about the eggshells. You don't have to rinse them first. Um, the eggshells that are here, um, sure, I actually think I, yes, I made eggs this morning. No, um, there's still a bit of the, is it albumin? That's the white stuff. No, you don't need to rinse them. Um, you can take them, and when you add them to the compost heap, just do that, okay? Just a little crush, just a little crush, because what it does is it helps the process quicker. Just like I said earlier, where we're taking the celery and we're just breaking it up a bit so that it's easier for the worms to eat. Okay, so you don't need to worry about that. Where's my lappy now? Okay, so that's that. Does that answer your question? Oh, the other one was with pineapples. So the pineapple skins, 100% in your vermicompost. Vermicompost, I mean, in your bokashi bin. For the worms, not so much, eh? Not so much for the worms. Um, they're not going to dig it, so rather put that into your bokashi. Um, and of course, remember to keep the top of your pineapple so that you can make pineapple beer. Yes! And the other reason, so that you can grow your own pineapple. Okay. Um, Andrew asks, two questions from Andrew. Um, can you add old bark from orchids to your compost? As long as your orchid didn't die from a fungal disease or something wrong with the soil. Unless there wasn't, um, uh, like, seriously, that you could see there was a root disease in this. In other words, all the roots rotted and it died and there was a funny smell because then you know that there's bad hohos there. Right, so, but you're old, yes, use it, use it, use it. In fact, when we repotting, we take um, the bark that's been broken up and we add that to our potting soil because it's lovely, it's broken down already, it's got these nice sharp ends and chips so that it also helps with the drainage. Okay, right, Andrew, next question. I don't put my compost in a container. I just have a space in my garden and that's where my compost heap is. That's fine. The only thing is that in our area, there are surface moles that eat up the worms. Ah, oh, moles, I oh, know. So then what you might want to do, Andrew, is I suggest that you either put down like a layer of corrugated iron um, or some thick, thick, thick black plastic, like builder's plastic. Put that down and then start building your compost heap on there. And you know, compost heaps also don't need to be fancy. Guys, they can be a couple of stakes in the ground, um, what we call a fence dropper, they wooden stakes, pop those in, a bit of chicken mesh around it, tied with cable ties. On the inside, line it with some weed guard um, or some recycled bags. And there's a compost heap. It doesn't have to be fancy. You can make them really fancy. Another way of making a compost heap which works so brilliantly, in fact, I've got one about 10 meters from me here, is we use pallets. A pallet on the side, a pallet there, a pallet at the back, tied together with cable ties, weed guard, stapled with a staple gun on the inside, and all the garden waste just goes in there. Nice and simple. Right, one more thing I want to show you, guys, is this. Now, all the leaves, all the beautiful leaves, We've told you that you've got amazing, that, that they're all here, they're here, okay? And when you're raking up and cleaning, um, yeah, look at all of them. Oh, my word, isn't it beautiful? Just, and all I know is, 
And I feel a bit like Father Christmas with this thing. All I know is that in this bag that I've got on my back here, that I have got potential, potential, potential. So if you don't have a compost heap, if you don't have a worm farm, if you don't have Bokashi, then you're going to get a black bag and you're going to take all the leaves that you've got, you're going to put the leaves in, you're going to take some strips of newspaper, strip it, put it in, you're going to take um, oh, whatever you've got, some lawn clippings, throw it in there, make a few holes, few holes in the bag, put a bit of water in with the hose pipe just to get a bit of moisture, tie it up and leave it, leave it. Three to four months, you go back there, open it up. Oh, and what are you going to find? <laughs> You're going to find this. It's broken down and started to actually form soil. You got it. That's what happens. It forms a beautiful leaf mold. Leaf mold is amazing. You use it to sow your seeds and you add it to your garden beds, turn it over. It is like gold. So don't tell me you don't have space. Just don't get it mixed up with the clothes that you're going to give away to one of the um, charities. You don't want to give them leaves, but actually you'll be giving, doing them a favor by giving them beautiful leaves because it's good for all of us. Folks, that's the 101 of compost, like bang, okay? Um, please do remember that I will answer all your questions a little bit later on Facebook. If you've got any more, please do send them to us. Clean up my darling. Remember to go out and get your latest copy of The Gardener or Detainee, um, folks. And also remember that I've got Facebook Live, a live session with the Sunflower Fund, which is raising marrow for the Bone Marrow Directory. Um, please have a look on my Facebook page. The advert is there or on The Gardener website. Please do come along and support this worthy, worthy cause. Guys, that's all I've got time for today. But get composting, recycle, reuse. I don't want to see anything being thrown away. Um, and take care of yourself. Stay warm. Stay warm. Remember to stock up on the essentials that I told you about. Um, take care of you and yours. And most importantly, as always, happy gardening. Lots of love. Tanya Fisser Live was proudly brought to you by The Gardener and Detainee Magazines. EMAG and digital subscription now available at thegardener.co.za and tanyafisser.com for all your gardening goodies and supplies. Calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, The Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za.